In this week's episode, we visit beautiful Bagara. Dan shows a really cheap and easy way of making a clothesline. We explore Elliot Heads and find some glorious rock pools at low tide, even though we're sharing them with these chompy little fishy friends. Dan checks out the Bundaberg Rum Distillery and brings a delicious treat home. How lucky are we? This week's park run is right across the road from the Caravan Park. And we get a private train ride around the Bundaberg Botanical Gardens. So we're in Bagara and that's the entrance to the caravan park. If you look through there, you can just see the end of our van in the unpowered section and the, and the start of the ram as well. And across the road, that's the beach just over there. So Bison Club, so it's a perfect location. Really nice. So we're all set up here at Bagara and we're in this unpowered section which has plenty of room. There's no sites allocated at all so you can choose where you'd like to be. So we've set up up here on this hill, a slight hill. It's got a really nice outlook. So there's no water hookup but there is a tap here so you can access the water from there. And the ram can just park right in front there, so really easy to get hitched up. We're about to go into Bundaberg now to visit the info centre, get some information about things to do around the area. We already know that we're going to go turtle hunting, but it's at the end of their hatching season, so we're not sure whether there's going to be many to see. We're going to ask and find out when's the best time to check that out. So we always try to go and see an information centre when we get to a new place. We found where bin chickens originate from. This is where they breed. We're on the 
Australian Sugar Cane Railway. I think it's called Australian Sugar Cane Railway. And we have the whole train to ourselves. Yep. Beep, beep. Here we come. The train we're on is an eight ton locomotive driven by a GM two stroke 104 kilowatt diesel. Morton Sugar Mill in Nambour purchased this train in 1964 to replace the steam locomotive of the same name. It worked in this mill until the mills closed Europe in December 2003. It would haul 80 full four-ton bins of cane around the Marucci River. Well, that was really good of them to let us on because it's um, right at the end of the day when they're going to close mm -hmm. and they've decided to do an extra lap around the Botanic Gardens just for us. Sounds so rather lovely. The whole train to ourselves because the next train runs on Sunday and we won't be here then. Mm. So we were very lucky and they even stopped the train to let us look at these tawny frogmouth birds up in a tree which we didn't manage to catch on the GoPro but yeah, really mm. lovely. It's all volunteer run. Only $5 to go around the whole botanical gardens on the train. So it's a really lovely perspective. So yeah. right place, right time, hey? Yeah, it worked out nicely. That's good. <laughs> when you're in Bundaberg, one thing you have to do is go to the Bundaberg Rum Distillery. They don't let you take any recording devices into the distillery itself, so you can't take your mobile phone or GoPro, whatever you have, but um, at the, before you go into the distillery, there's uh, a museum, so you can record there, and you can also record all these different types of rums that they have on display. It's a bit weird that they chose a polar bear to represent their company rather than an Australian native animal but after reading this it makes a little bit more sense because the guy's name was McMahon which means son of bear so that's why they used the white polar bear on their logo. While Dan is at the Bundaberg Rum Distillery, I am at the Bundaberg Barrel. This is where the ginger beer is all brewed. So I'm going to go in and check it out and have some tastings because I'd rather this than the rum. Another case of really bad timing 
when I went in there, they said, oh, we've just finished our last tasting of the day. So you're welcome to walk around, but yeah, no tasting. So I didn't get to taste. So I just had to go off what I thought. And I got this six pack for $10, which is still pretty good. If you go there and do the tastings, um, just know they end at three. So if you go at five past three, you will miss them. But I got two ginger beers um, for Dan because he's going to get some rum from his visit. And I got a peach, a tropical mango, a pineapple coconut. Mmm, that's going to be my favourite. And I got a diet lemon lime and bitters. So you can get a lot um, more variety obviously from here than you can in stores around. They've got lots of different flavours I've never seen before. So yeah, worth a visit. And this is where Dan is now. I'll spin you around. He's in there. <laughs> So I've come to pick him up on the designated driver today and we'll see what goodies he comes out with. Mm. None for me because I hate rum. Oh. I'm trying my first drink from the Bundaberg factory. This one's peach. I've never seen peach in the shops, which is why I wanted to grab it. Mmm, it's very peachy. Oh, I like that one. It's sweet. Yum. And check out lunch today. This is just bits and pieces of what we had in our fridge. Veggie balls, spinach, sun-dried tomatoes and some cashew cheese. Mm. We are down at Elliot Heads Beach, just going for a bit of a wander because we heard there's, uh, there's some really nice rock pools down here when it's a low tide. So yeah, we're just going to go and check it out. It's a windy day, there's some windsurfers out here, as you can see. And you can see the tide comes right into where we are now. Yeah, this, huge open landscape of... Look at that boat up the, on the sand. Yeah, so all this will be water in high tide. And we're hoping that right over there in the distance is where the rock pools are. Rockpools have been one of our like really must want to do. Like we were most looking forward to checking out lots of different rock pools and stuff. And we found this stuff as well. And I don't think we're gonna get much better than this to be honest. This is beautiful. I hope you can see all the fish in there because they're pretty cool.
show us how elegantly you can get into the rock pool. <laughs> 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 so elegant. <laughs> so we've moved rock pools now. There's a few nibblers in that last one. <laughs> <laughs> Those little black and white zebra fish, and they started eating us. <laughs> they do. They nibble. Yeah, chomp. No. Well, one chomp. Hardly a chomp. It's it like was a, a chomp on my leg. It's a little nibble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I look tastier than you do, obviously. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> There's lots of things they on do. the bottom. Oh, this one. <laughs> they take you by surprise because you don't expect these little fish to have a little nibble on your leg, but they do. Or Elliot Heads, definitely come here. Elliot Heads Beach, and yeah. just check the tide times, come here at a low tide, and yeah, just, just walk out. And, and there's a caravan park down here as well, so oh, yeah. you could walk from the caravan park down here. Yeah, look quite nice. So next time, if we're ever down this area again, I reckon we'll stay at the Elliot Heads Beach caravan park and then yeah. just wander down here. But yes, yeah, beautiful, definitely. So a habit that we've been getting into is on our travel day, we like pulling up, setting up and having lunch straight away because usually it's around 1.30, 2 o'clock by the time we've unhitched and set up. And we found the easiest thing to do is to make sushi the night before and so we eat it for dinner and then the extra we keep in the fridge and we have it for lunch the next day when we arrive at our new destination. Now. We have a rice cooker that we cook the rice in, but when we're unpowered, we can't use that. So what I'm going to do is take the rice cooker over to the camp kitchen. Because we're at a caravan park now, and we just never really thought of using the facilities that we pay for. So I'm going to walk over to the camp kitchen with the rice cooker, plug it in, leave it there, come back and it's done. Because there's nothing worse than cooking rice over a stove and trying to get it exactly right, especially as sushi rice. It needs to be just right. So you can come with me and see if this works. Otherwise I've just wasted two cups of sushi rice. Here it is, all ready to go over to the camp kitchen. So it worked. The rice cooker was fetched from the camp kitchen and that is all the sushi it made. So tonight we had, we, we've done it for the first time, this plantain chicken, vegan chicken with avocado and that's a big monster one. I'm going to chop these up and get into these now. So half is dinner tonight, half is lunch tomorrow. So this is our washing line setup. We've pretty much got this idea from someone else off YouTube, but all it is is a couple of bits of pipe that I've chopped to length, some end caps and some bits of string. So I just drilled a couple of holes in each end of the pipe, uh, threaded the rope through. And so same thing on this end. I've got just two holes drilled through the plastic and the rope's just threaded through there. And on the inside of here is a knot so it doesn't pull through back through the hole. Now I do have to make a modification on this because I put the holes too far in and it's too tight. It's really hard to get that over so once I bring those holes to the end here I'll be able to just thread both of them on there and it should hold nice and tight. But it's just a nice easy lightweight way to hang your clothes on the line. It, you know you can fit quite a few loads of washing on here, beach towels, whatever you want. And when you put it away, you just roll, roll the rope around the, um, around the tube and just store it away in your, in your um, tunnel boot. Bob's your uncle. So I've just drilled out some new holes now, a bit closer to the edges on this 
plastic tubing here. So I'm gonna pull out the, the rope and then feed it through the new holes and see if that fits a bit better. And there you have it, the final result, and it's working a lot better than it was before. It's all nice and tight, and I can actually get the um, get the rope around both ends properly now. And yeah, it's a good height, tension's good, so worked out nicely. It's parkrun morning! Yay! We're so up and energised, <laughs> ready for it as we always are. <laughs> just ran out of bed two minutes ago. Yeah, because our van is just over there and the parkrun starts just over there. So this one, from the looks of the course map, we go north a bit, turn around, go south, turn around and come back here. So it's an out and back both ways. Would it be cheating if we hire one of those scooters? <laughs> yes. No one would know, would they? Maybe. I think you'd stand out a little bit. <laughs> nice view over there. So we're here heading this way. Right. So we just go across the grass onto the path over there. Uh, okay, just be aware it does get very skinny and there'll be lots of people converging in there so if you're going to be out in front, get out in front early. Ready? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> So we've got to pass through this point where we finished on the way, so it's halfway here. Can I do another two and a half K? I don't know. Look who's coming. Don't hurt yourself. So we're back at the van now after that short walk. And that was a really nice park run. Yeah, one more park run done and a B to add to our alphabet list for all the park runs we've done. I don't think mm. we've done a B yet. Yeah, we did Raw Beach Waters. Oh, Raw Beach Waters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not another B. No. When Dan says B, there's an alphabet challenge on the Parkrun app that you can do to try to do every uh, letter of the alphabet starting with the Parkrun name. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, nice little run that one. I quite liked it. Um, nice and scenic as usual at this part of the country. Mm. So it's kind of an out and back then another out and back. So we went north and turned and then went south and turned and back to the middle and I liked how it changed up the scenery there was a bit of bush a bit of road a bit of track a bit of boardwalk a bit of pathway 
and for me that made it go a little bit faster but yeah. not for you <laughs> no i think i was just feeling it this week it just felt like it's going on and on and on i got to two kilometers and i thought oh geez felt like three or four so mm. but i still like it's really really nice i was just feeling a bit of pain this week i think and you would have seen it in last week's episode but for us that big half marathon bushwalk um mm. fraser it was only days ago mm. so our legs are still recovering yeah. our shoulders our butts our everything everything, <laughs> everything. Yeah, so really. yeah i felt really heavy legs today mm. i only i did a little bit slower than harvey bay um for that reason i think and there was a little bit of incline slightly on this course whereas harvey bay had none mm. it's nice and flat that one yeah no it's really nice though i really enjoyed it I, that, what's your rating my rating would be eight and a half yeah i'll give it a nine mm. it was it was nice now it's pack up day <laughs> Yeah. We try not to do this, but sometimes you can't help it where your timing of places and schedules come. So we've stayed up until when we have to, to do the park run. That's why we're still here today. And now it's time. We've got two hours to shower and pack up pack up the inside and the outside and go and we are off to 1770 today yeah it's about a two hour drive so it should work out if we leave here around 10 we should get there and there get there around midday have mm. lunch well set up and have, have that lunch. sushi we yes. showed you last night this is why we have lunch pre-organized so we don't have to one less about it. one less thing to worry about once we get there yeah so, so anyway on that note we that better get cracking bagara park run Done. That was our 41st. Oh yeah, nine more to go. Mm -hmm. We hit our big 50. Yeah. <laughs> next week's episode we visit 1770 and Agnes Water where we watch some amazing sunsets and walk the well-known paper bark trail. Plus we go to the getaway cafe for lunch. And we choose from a huge selection of vegan ice cream. And we go for one of the most scenic hikes we've ever been on, the Red Rock Trail. Thanks for watching.